Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we are going to build an online courses app. I'll show you how to create a complex interface using SwiftUI. I'll also introduce you to MVVM design pattern and observable objects. This is gonna be a long, long lesson. So I urge you to post this video and grab a cup of coffee. Anyway, without wasting time, let's fire up Xcode. So before we proceed, in order for you to follow along, you need to download the starter project from the link in the description below. When you open that project, you will notice that there's a folder called Utils. Inside the Utils folder, there's a JSON file called Mock JSON Data. You will also notice that if you go to the Assets folder, you have all the assets that you need. Right. So the next thing that we want to do is the app that we are building is it displays a list of courses and all the courses are grouped by categories and when you click on each course you also see that each course has a list of lessons. We need to build our models to represent our data. So the next thing that we need to do is inside your courses uh, folder create a new group. Simply call this model right inside the model folder create a new file select swift file and click next uh, the first uh, model that we need is lesson to represent our curriculum right next thing that we need to do is let's create our model so i'll call this struct lesson you need to confirm conform to codable, right? Um, let's give this lesson an ID. So I just say it goes to UUID so we can be able to uniquely identify it. Let's add another property, say let name because each and every lesson has a name. Uh, this will be a string. Let's add another one, say let uh, description. This will be also a string. Let's add another one. Um, video URL. This will be a string as well. Uh, this is for us to be able to play uh, the video for each and every lesson. Let's add another model. Create a new file. Swift file. Click next. I'll call this one course. This will represent our course. Say create. Uh, let's add here. Yeah. Say struct course. This also conforms to codable. Uh, a course also has a name, which will be a string. A course also is an image URL, this will be a string. We also need to add lessons, so the course will also have lessons. This will be an array of lesson, right? Let's go ahead and create another one. We now need to have a category for our courses, so switch file again. I'll say Kati category because yeah category wrong right let's go ahead create another struct category wrong again it conforms to codable uh, let's add the category name which will be also a string Let's also add um, the courses. Um, I'll call this one items to be uh, an array of course. Right. Let's go ahead and add our view model. Let's add a new group. We'll call this V 
view model right let's create a new file new file call this category view model right in this case we have a model and we have um, a view model um, let's also add a new group and call this a uh, new, new group let's call this view this is where we will put our views um, so let's put our model above here so and then put our view model above the view right so model view model view let's uh, drag our content view into our views so this is where we will put all our views and in our model we have our models and then here uh, we want to add our view model right the view model sits between the model and the view the view model converts data in the model into uh, human readable format that can be represented in the view for example if we had a property called debt here and it's a debt um, type and we wanted to uh, display it on our view then we will need to convert it to a string so that we can be able to uh, display it on a text right we we'll have a separate lesson where we will go deeper into view models uh, but for now uh, let's continue let's add our first view model i'm just let's add a new class uh, call this class uh, course view model right in here let's add a new uh, variable we we'll call it course of type course uh, let's put an initializer yeah and we say course course then we just say selfie dot course equals to course right now let's start by adding a unique id um goes to uuid let's add our first variable which is name the same as the one in our in our course model this is of type string and we want it to retain uh selfie dot course dot name right let's add another one which is um, um, image URL of type string it retains self dot course dot image URL also add uh, lessons uh, lessons this will be an array of lessons Then we return self dot course dot lessons. We want to add one more property. We call this number of lessons because we want to calculate the number of lessons in each course. Lessons. Then I'll say string. Then this will return. Uh, self dot lessons dot count um, we need to check first if the lessons are greater than one then uh, we need to do a string interpolation here then we can just simply say self dot uh, lessons again also of the course uh, self dot lessons count right then we will put a label and say lessons but if our lessons are less than less than one then we will just say self dot lessons then we say lesson 
Let's also add a view model for our category row. So I'll say class category view model. Right? Uh, we now say var category row. Category row. Put an initializer. Say category row. Category row. You can simply say self dot category row. This equals to category row. Uh, we also need an ID. So ID is equals to view ID to uniquely identify each category. Uh, I think category has a name. This will be a string. Uh, return selfie dot category row dot name. Uh, each category also has a list of courses. So I'll say courses. Um, this will be a list of our course view model. Right? This returns um, self, self, self dot category row dot items because we named our courses items dot map. Then we say um, courses view model dot init let's add one last view model i'll say class this uh, will be for our categories view model now this one conforms to something called observable uh, object classes that conform to an observable protocol can use swift uis published property wrapper to automatically announce its changes to that property. So for example, if we put here at published property wrapper, say var categories is equals to categories view model. Uh, whenever maybe for example we get these categories or we call an API or we call a function to get a list of our categories and whenever this property has been published or it has been uh, updated this will allow us to automatically notify our view that hey now we now have a list of categories right uh, i'll have a separate lesson where we would deep dive deep into um, observable objects and uh, property wrappers but for now let's continue now we need to get a list of categories from our json that uh, file we have um, our mock data here but we don't have a function to be able to uh, read this file so what we need to do is we need to add another group here or we'll simply call this one services here we are just simply mimicking uh, um, a, a services class so for example if we're calling an api to get a list of courses so i'll call this one courses services right i'll add a class here and call it courses i'll just simply the call course services course service right inside our course service we need to add a function to fetch uh to read um, our json file so i'll simply simply call it func and I'll call it fetch categories. Feel free to name it whatever you want. You can call it fetch courses or fetch categories. It doesn't matter. Here we'll pass a completion handler. So this is a closure. We'll say it escaping. Escaping. Then what we need to do is when um, we, we get a list of categories, when it's successful, when it's successfully read uh, our file, we need to return success. When there's an error, we need to return an error. So 
what we will do, we will use something called result, right? Inside our result, we want to be able, when it's successful, we want to be able to retain a list of categories, uh, category wrong. When there's an error, we need to retain an error, right? Then, yeah. Um, let's quickly look at what this result does. So a result is a value that represents either a success or a failure, right? Uh, we forgot to do one more thing here. We need to say this will be a void function. So I'll say void. Let's now say let bundle equals to bundle. Uh, for type of self we can now add try to uh, read our JSON file so we'll put a guard statement here a guard statement is used to transfer the program control out of scope when one or more conditions are not met so in this case if we try to read our JSON file and um, maybe for some reason there's an error we need to quickly return so we'll then put a completion handler and pass an error an error message so what we do is we now say let url is equals to um, bundle dot url from resources then we put in the name of our json uh, file in this case it's mock data and the extension is simply JSON, right? Else, in our else part, uh, if there's an error, we need to put a completion here. Then we push, uh, put, pass in our failure, and we need to pass in an, an error. So what we need to do before we do that, let's uh, put an enum, I'll call this, error type error then put a case here say error loading file so if it maybe error loading then I can pass in a message of that string so now whenever we have, uh, we try to read our JSON file and we have an error, we can simply now uh, pass in an error. So I'll say, uh, cause error dot error loading. Then I'll put a message, error reading maybe, reading, from file okay then we quickly return but if we manage to read our file we will simply continue now need to um, uh, decode our, uh, our our JSON so we say let JSON data equals to first of all let's Maybe right. Let's repeat with a uh, do try catch. So say do try. So I'll say let JSON data equals to um, try data. By the way, I decided not to edit most of. Uh, these parts where I'm making mistakes simply because I want you guys to also see that when we are developing an application as developers, it's not uh, something that is straightforward. You make mistakes, you make errors, and we we'll correct them together. So here we'll say contents of URL. Now we can continue. We we'll say we now need to get our categories. Copies equals to try again. Uh, we use something called JSON decoder dot decode type. In this case, we want to decode our 
category row then we set dot self from json data the only thing that you need to make sure for now for the purpose of this lesson is whatever your property names are in your uh, json file should match exactly what is inside your models here your file so categories let's now just simply go ahead and pass in a completion uh, completion this time we say success and it's expecting categories right so we now have um we now have our function to get categories let's go back to our category view model inside our category view model um, we need to put in a function func get categories categories right doesn't take in anything now we can now call course services dot fetch categories uh, here we get a result when we get a result we can run a switch statement switch result right if it uh, it fails it's not failing case that failure let's get the error inside that failure all right um now let's simply quickly say let's print something error we are not going to show any messages for now for the purpose of this let's put another case and say dot success we get our categories 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 <laughs> uh, okay uh, when we get our categories we now say selfie we need to assign our categories we need to publish our categories now so the categories is equals to categories dot map the same thing that we did now we now map our category view model dot init right mm, okay let's print this error that is coming from this dot localized description right let's call our so, function say init say get categories right we are done so let's go back to our content view and put a property paper say observed object um an observed object is a proper trapper type that subscribes to an observable object and invalidates a view whenever the observable object changes so whenever we get new categories then it will uh, automatically uh, update our view we don't need to call our get categories from our content view so we say var categories view model um, equals to categories view model first let's wrap this inside the navigation view i'll cut this text paste it inside then let's give it a title put whatever name you want so i'll just say hello g or g right uh, we need to put a list to display our categories so i'll put a list here cut this text paste it inside let's run a loop uh, so we are looping through all our categories so we say self dot categories view model dot categories uh, comma then we need to put an id to uniquely to uniquely identify each category then we say category category in we cut this text we paste it inside here we replace the hello world text with category to name let's hit the resume button as you can see we now 
we are now showing all our categories so we have featured most popular our topics for you inside our body let's wrap our text in the vertical stack so say command embed in vertical stack let's remove the allow word text and say self dot category view model name let's align our vertical stack leading so say alignment leading let's give this um, a font or say headline let's also give it a foreground color say dot secondary because we want to also display our courses scrolling horizontally we need to add a scroll view so I'll say scroll view and it should be scrolling horizontally shows indicators to force let's remove this content inside our scroll view we need to uh, add a horizontal stack We will give it an alignment of uh, top and a spacing of eight. Let's remove this content. Inside our horizontal stack, we need to run a loop. So we'll be looping through all our courses. So I'll say self dot category view model courses and we need an id id then we can now get each course in and we are going to add vertical stack this vertical stack i'll just give it an alignment of um, alignment I'll say the leading I also need to give this vertical stack a frame so I'll say frame I'll give it uh, a width of 90 8 of uh, 240 inside our vertical stack let's add an image um, we then now use our course dot image URL we call resizable let's build this to see if we can see our image hit the resume button Let's go back to our content view. You can see now that we can able to see our, our courses images displayed um, and also our categories. Let's go back to our courses and um, first of all, we need to extract this vertical stack into a separate uh, sub view. Uh, you can even put it in a separate file so i hit command again extract sub view i'll call this course item uh, let's cut it from here say cut put it above our preview inside here let's pass in the course 
the sweet way of our coarse grey water and we also need to pass the coarse here right let's hit the resume button so here you can see that we are not seeing any uh, we are not seeing our image simply because in our preview we don't have an image to show or our cost to show because we are just passing in an empty cost here so what we need to do is we need to add a cost so simply pass in a cost here where we are passing in empty cost we will pass um, a cost so we have a course with a name and an image URL and an empty lessons. Okay, let's go back to our image and give it a height. So say frame. We give it a height of um, 149. Let's hit the resume button again. Zoom. Okay. Now we see that our image is much smaller. So what we need to do next is let's add a vertical stack so that we can group in our um, course name and number of lessons. I uh, will say alignment. Say dot leading. I'll then add a text inside here. Say cause the name. I'll give it font dot uh, headline. Give a foreground color of the primary. Let's hide this so that we have more space to work with. Let's add another text. So I'll say text. Say course dot number of lessons. We give a font. Font here will be dot second uh, caption. We also give a foreground color of dot second term. Yeah, it looks like our course is coming. Our item is displaying correctly now. Um, let's go to our vertical stack, the one that is holding our text, and add a padding. So I'll say padding, dot leading, and I'll give leading of eight. As you can see, there's a space. Uh, we also need to add a space on our so that when the image is uh, when the text when, when the course name is only one line it also displays correctly so I'll just add a space here uh, one more thing is on our vertical stack we need to add a corner radius so I'll give a corner radius of 8 again this is optional let's go back to our quantum view and also hit the zoom button you can see now our courses are displayed nicely and you can scroll vertically and horizontally right. I've noticed this our navigation part is inside uh, is inside uh, this outside okay one thing that I've noticed is our navigation bar is not displaying this is because we, we have added it outside the navigation bar, the navigation view. So let's cut it and put it inside um, and hit the resume button again. And you can see now that our navigation bar is displaying properly. Next thing what we want to do is when we click on each course, we want to be able to navigation, get to a detailed view. So to, in order for us to do that, let's go to our views folder and add a new file. This will be a Swift UI file. Click next. 
I'll just simply call this cost data view, hit create. And then it also comes with the preview. <coughs> Inside here we need to pass our cost, so this will be just a single cost. Cost, so it will be our cost view model. Okay, it's a type of cost view model. We also need to supply our cost detail with a, a dummy. The data so that you will be able to display this. So simply paste this. So it's just because we are model of course uh, with a dummy preview data. Um, let's go up here above to our body. First, we need to wrap this inside a list. So this text command embed inside a list, and uh, we don't need to pass this. We need to change. <coughs> we need to add an image. So I'll say image. Uh, this will be our course image URL. Course view model dot image URL. I'll say scale to fit. Then uh, next we need to also call resizable dot, dot resizable right okay so we can see that we are displaying our image correctly. Below our hello, because this is inside the list, you can see that it's not uh, uh, going all the way to the edges. What we need to do is we need to just say list for insects. Right. Let's try again. Okay. Oops. Next row bucket. list for insets and then we add edge insets right now our image is displayed correctly let's add um, let's wrap this text inside the vertical stack so I'll say command then embed, embed inside the vertical stack I'll just align this alignment Yes, I'm sure you've guessed that we need to display our course name, course view model dot m. Let's give a font of dot large title. Give font weight. Simply say bold. It's also given a foreground color. I'll call primary. Okay. Okay. Let's also add uh, a text to display our. I'll uh, just say text. Let's say curriculum. I could Long. This we have a foreground color of secondary. Let's also give it a font. The font should be just a headline. Font. Okay. Okay. Next, um, let's put a divider between uh, the course and the 
the curriculum because under the curriculum we want to display our lessons. So I'll just come here and call divider. This will put a simple small line, a line between the course name and the and our, our curriculum. Okay. Next, we want to display our list of courses. So the same way we did with the courses, we, because this is also already in a list, we run another loop. So I'll say for each um, course, course view model dot lessons. Set comma id dot id. Now we can get each lesson in lesson in. <coughs> Let's add a horizontal stack. So I say edge stack. Inside our horizontal stack, we need to add a vertical stack. Vertical stack. Uh, in our vertical stack, we need to add an image. Let's now add a button. So, uh, Xcode comes with uh, system buttons. This who call it uh, play. Then it should be dot view. Uh, let's give it a foreground color. I just say dot white. Right. Uh, you can see our button is there, but you cannot see it because also our background is white. So we need to change the background for it costing. First, let's change the frame. So I'll change frame. I'll change the width. Give it a width of 50. Give it a height of. Uh, you can also use the button for this, but I, I just prefer to use it with costing. We also need to change the background. We pass in an orange color. Background, say color dot orange. Right. Let's hit the zoom button so you can now see that we now have a vertical stack that is about um, an image inside to represent our button. Uh, let's also give it a corner radius. So I'll give you a corner radius of 10. Okay. The next thing we need to do, because this is already inside a horizontal stack, and inside a horizontal stack, we have a vertical stack. We also need to add another vertical stack to uh, display the name of the lesson. So I'll say alignment. Leading. <coughs> Inside this, I'll add a text. Now, display our lesson. But now, give it a font. Font uh, headline, a foreground color, say the primary. So the reason why I'm, I'm just using these colors is so that when we switch between dark mode and light mode, uh, the OS will automatically change the colors. So, for example, if we switch to dark mode, this will automatically change to uh, to white, and the background will be black. So that's why I'm not uh, adding any special colors. Okay. Next, we need to add another text. This will display. Um, the description, so I'll say text. I'll say listen to description. We add a font. We'll just say some headline. Let's add a foreground color. 
Um, stay second, do we? Okay. Um, let's also add a padding to our to our bit plastic that is holding our text for separating horizontally. Uh, yeah, so you can see that we now have our item and we're displaying our button and our image. Let's go back to our courses view. So inside our course item, what we need to do is we need to wrap our course item in a navigation link so that when you click on it, it takes us to the detail view. So I'll simply come here and say navigation link. I'll say destination, destination. This will be our course detail view. Then we pass in our course view model. This will be course. Then we can now wrap this, cut this course item and paste it inside here. Okay. Uh, if we go back to our content view, Okay, one more thing, the reason why it's um it's showing this gray color is we need to go back to our um, course item. So go down to our course item. Uh, we then say on our image here, we say dot rendering mode, then we say dot original. Okay. Now you can see that it's displaying correctly. We go back to our content view. Hit the resume button again. Uh, click on each time item. You can now see that we are able to navigate to the detail view. Right? Okay. I can see that our back button here is showing uh, a blue color. So what you simply move that like, uh, blue color on our navigation uh, back button, we need to just simply go here and say init. Then you say UI navigation bar the appearance dot change color equals to dot label. Okay. Now when you click on this, okay, let's hit the zoom button first. Okay. Okay, now when you click on it, it is now uh, taking the system color. Okay, one thing that I've also noticed is our, we don't have a navigation bar title here, so we go back to our detail view. Um, we click here on list. Okay, then we can simply say navigation bar title equals to Okay. We don't want it to display um, a large navigation bar title. So instead, let me put this inside a text. So I'll say text. Then I'll say comma display what dot Nine. Okay. Now let's go back to our content view. Run again. Hit this. You can see now our object is no longer. Uh, okay. Now inside our uh, course detail view, let's um, extract this into a separate component so that we are able to have uh, clean code. So command extract sub view. I'll call this lesson item. Okay. We go here at the bottom, we cut it. Again, you can put it in a separate file. Okay. Say let lesson. Lesson. Let's go back above here and pass in our lesson. Okay. okay, 
Next, we want to be able, when we click on each uh, lesson item, when we click on the button, we want to be able to play our video. In order to do that, we need to uh, create uh, an AV player view. Uh, by default, SwiftUI doesn't have an AV uh, player, so we need to use UI Kit uh, AV player. So to do that, we need to add a new view that will conform to UI view controller pre representable. This allows us to use UI Kit view controllers in our SwiftUI project. So I'll say view new new file. I'll choose SwiftUI view. Then I'll name this. AV player view, AV player view, hit create. Let's remove this um, preview, let's remove the body. In here, instead of conforming to our view, let's conform to UI view controller. UI view controller representable. Let's also import UI kit. kit. Okay. Inside here let's put let video URL URL. Okay. Let's say private car player. This will both type AV player. AV player. Okay. Oh, I was supposed to import AV kit, that's why it's complaining. Okay. Then we return AV player. We pass in the URL. This will be our video URL. For now, let's force and repeat so that we don't waste time. Below here, Okay, should be URL. Below we need to uh, conform to another method called update. You have a controller, but this one is for, for the AV player, so I'll say player controller. Controller AV Player Controller Okay, AV Player Controller Then I need to pass in the context To be the context Okay. Now we need to do a few things. What our presentation style, we need to make it maybe automatic or full. And then player controller dot player is equals to Player. Okay. Then finally we need to play. Control to player. To play. Play. Okay. Uh, one last thing we need to do is we need another function called make UI view. Controller, and then inside here we we'll just retain a view controller. Okay. Now let's go back to our cost detail view. Uh, first, let's add a padding here so that there's a little bit of padding uh, between our 
title and our lesson name. Next, we need to add a gesture. So when you tap on it, we need to add an on tap gesture. Inside the on tap gesture, uh, outside here we need to do display a sheet. So we choose the one that says sheet is branded, is represented. Uh, it's expecting a bindable object. So we come here, say put here states eval so a player which equals to false. Okay. Here we just uh, we need to put a dollar sign. So we just pass here. For now, we don't need all of this on dismiss. Uh, let's simply now call our MV player view. We pass in our lesson dot video URL. Okay. Because our video URL is uh, a string, we need to uh, convert it to a URL. So simply say URL, then say string, then pass our video URL. One last thing is we need to just call each ignore separate phase to the all so that it covers the whole the whole place. Okay. Let's call self here. Okay, one last thing that we need to do is inside our on tap gesture, we need to update our show AV player to true. So I'll come here and say self dot show AV player equals to true. Then we can now go back to our content view. Uh, we click on the first course, we click the lesson. Here we go. We are able to display our video. So that's it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you have learned something today. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Till next time.